legislate. Power King. The conglomerate. Who will make the magic in 2017? What colors your magic? Welcome to our panel discussion on the Vodacom Durban July Gallus, which we saw take place earlier this morning. And uh, I've got three guys joining me up here on the podium. I've got racing journalist and editor Andrew Harrison, and I've got the two champion jockeys, Kevin Shea and Garth Puller. And they're going to give us their opinions on what they saw today. We're going to work through from number one right through until we show you the or talk about the gallop that took place in Gauteng yesterday. But let's get straight into it. A lot of these horses work by themselves. Andrew, uh, let's start with uh, Nightingale. What did you think? I thought she, she, I thought she worked very well. Um, wasn't asked to do much, just to stretch her legs, uh, but she, she looked on top of her game. So I think she, she's uh, ready for the race. Oh, good. Right, we're battling with the sound on the second mark, but uh, while they get that fixed, uh, Andrew was pleased, thought it uh, didn't show too much, but worked well. Let's see if Kevin's mark's working. Yeah, Laf, I must say, um, Nightingale, as Anthony said in his interview, they didn't, she's a very relaxed filly, she didn't do too much, she looks fit, um, yeah, she looks well, and uh, you know, with big race, Anthony, on, uh, you've got to give her a, a chance in the first six, they're paying six places, so for me, it's one of those that you could throw into the back of your contents. Yeah, look, I think she's a, she's a nice mover, she didn't do much in her work. I don't really see her beating the Colts. I think she's in the deep end a little bit. She's got a top pilot on. He's won four Julys. Um, but for me, I think it's going to be a hard ask. All right. Uh, last year's runner-up, Marin Oresco, ran from a really deep draw. And uh, it was good to see the owners, uh, Marsh, uh, Fred, and, of course, uh, uh, my other good mate, Bryn Russell, come down. They came to the gallops. Last year, they didn't get a draw. They were given 19. This time, they've been given a better draw. But, Andrew, uh, the last race suggested that the tactics were wrong. Um, yeah, I think they, they, they tried to keep him up a bit closer to, to, to uh, give him a bit of a, a kick, and it didn't seem to work. I think he's likes, there's a horse that likes to relax at the back, and uh, he'll be running on strong. I think he put on very good work. He's very keen, so yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah Kev, he, he did work well. Yeah, Laf, I say he did work very well. He's a very small horse. Um, with a nice draw, Bernard's going to give him a, a bit of a chance. Uh, as uh, you alluded to uh, last time, they tried to force the pace up there to be, because Captain America was in the race and there was the horse to beat. And it ran uh, well below his form, but he'd given a chance. This horse likes to come at them and he's uh, real gutsy. What you see is what you get with this horse and I thought he worked very well. Goth? Yeah, I think he put in good work. Um, he's carrying top weight. It's not easy with top weight. Uh, I think he might be held by one or two of the other four-year-olds. But um, he is a horse that could, uh, could run in the first six. Yeah, certainly a very good horse in his day. Right, French Navy. He's a multiple Group 1 winner. He worked with a companion. And uh, nice, well, good to see Lyle Hewson back. He's come back from an injury. Kevin will tell us more about that injury in a moment or the treatment they gave him to get him right. Uh, quite sedate work. Uh, yeah, he wasn't asked to, to, to do much, but I spoke to Lyle after, after the gallop and he said he was happy with the work. He said the horse pulled him through nicely and that, that was all that was asked of him. Kev, what do you think? Yeah, Laffey, he has to bring back his form. Um, he has got the form, it is there. horse doesn't lose his uh, ability. He may, they maybe lose form. He lost his form a little bit, but um, if he can run some of those races he ran last year, uh, he's got to be a runner. But as you said, Lyle Hewitson is back with a broken collarbone. Normally a broken collarbone, collarbone is two to three months. Uh, with this day and age now, they're going to hyperbaric chambers and get the oxygen through the system and uh, he's back in the saddle in under two months. Uh, uh, it's, it's welcome to see Lyle back. He's a top, top rider and uh, he's, he's had a ride in July before, so this is no, it's not new for him. So um, this horse, if he brings his form back, he also could have a chance. God, you give him a chance? Look, he's, he's trained by a top conditioner. I mean, he knows what to do. I think he's had a couple of tries at the July. I don't Really sees an older horse. He, he keeps out a horse like Horizon. It's a little bit of a worry. I mean, Sean's a friend of mine. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really think so. Okay, dokie. Let's move on to Brazuka. This is Johan Janssen from Furen's runner and uh, for the Verners. And uh, they're pushing hard to get that big win. And uh, this was, I thought, worked very well. He looks very well. Yeah, uh, Paul, I, th I thought he worked very well too. He's really, really keen. Um, 
I wasn't quite sure if you'd see out the 2-2, but he has won over the 2,000 metres at Turfentain. And I remember the one race, uh, you know, when he beat Dio Juvente in the Champion Stakes there, I think that was a good run. Mm. Yeah, he has ability, Kev. I can't agree with you guys more. This guy, this, this horse was very impressive in the gallops. Um, I think if you can go 2,000 at Turfentain, the 2-2 at Gravel, you could get away with it. I can't see a... Uh, a, a, a fast run race I can't see them really stretching him out so it is going to suit the source the way he looked I think he's a big big runner in a race like this yeah I think he put up good fractions he uh, fast times but does he see out the 2-2 question mark um, you know, I think the others I prefer but um, obviously he's a, a horse with ability Guys, while we got you on the air again Kevin touched on a good point the pace when you analyze these horses do you come up with anything other than an Brazuca and the conglomerate to make the pace? You know, uh, Lef, it's a, it, it's a group one. It's the biggest race in the country. It's going to be a scramble for the first uh, 600 meters. Um, guys on the inside holding their positions. Guys on the outside trying to force the, force to get over. So the pace, the, the pace is on. When they get to around about the mile and they're going downhill, they try to ease it up. But then the gallop is on. There's still guys caught wide that are, are trying to move up. Uh, I, I see it a little bit differently. I see that the pace, there will be a little bit of pace. I don't think in a race like this that they will ease it up completely. And you'll get those horses that see it out, the, the stamina horses, will run up there and keep the gallop going. It's, it's, it's got to be in their favour to make it a race. All right, interesting. There's the perspective from a, a master rider, and he's ridden this race many times. Do they slow it down after the drill or, or do they keep the pace up and make the derby horses come right into contention? But let's move on to Master Sabina, now trained by Justin Snaith, one of his big string of horses he's got in this race. Got it to do, but very talented, Andrew. No, he's a talented horse. Any horse that wins uh, two summer cups has got to have some ability. I'm not quite sure that he's quite at home at Gravel. He, I know he's won here before, but um, his other runs have been sort of iffy. He worked well enough, and he's a big horse, but he came back sweating quite heavily, so it would be interesting to see how he goes. KB? Yeah, Laff, um, he deserves his spot in the race, as Andrew alluded to, that uh, is gravel his course. Now, if it was Turpentine, I would say he'd be a huge runner. Um, he was sweating a little bit, um, profusely, as I would say, in the classics. But, um, yeah, um, for me, I don't think he's... I think there's a couple of other horses that might have his measure. I think Justin Snaith's got a strong hand in that, and I think uh, one or two others will finish in front of this one. What do you think, Garth? Yeah, I think he's one of the errors without flights in the Justin Stain, uh, Justin Snaith bow. Uh, it's going to be hard for him. I think he's a turf and turn specialist. Like a horse like Elevation, was never his best at Gravel. Yeah, that's uh, very accurate. Well, as we, I did uh, mention, he has changed stables now. Let's look at Tilbury Fort. Got into this race by virtue of running second in the 1900 in the rain-soaked track here, off a low merit rating and uh, propelled him into the race and uh, good to see uh, the, the bunch of owners looking for a, a horse in this big race 33 to 1 kevin shay told me earlier today i think it's got it all to do nothing wrong with the gallop but got it all to do yes paul i thought he, he also carried his head a bit high in the gallop and and, and he looked he was looking around a bit um in, in, in the 1900 he was staying on and the, and the other horses came from behind and went past him like the dirty shirt so um for me I think Sean Terry might actually sacrifice him as a pacemaker. Interesting, Kev. Yeah, that's just, and that is very interesting. Uh, as I said earlier on, I didn't know much about the source until he flashed up and ran second. Um, I, I can't agree with you more. I think he's got it all to do, but if he's a kind of horse that had to sacrifice for the others, I wouldn't be surprised. Garth? Yeah, I thought it was one of the less impressive gallops, but then I must say a lot of horses hold back in their gallops and they, and they, and they produce on race day, but I, uh, I didn't think it was a good gallop. Okay, let's move on to uh, the locally trained Saratoga dancer, put in a bold effort, this member in Seattle last year, ran fifth, and uh, it was touch and go with it, got into Vodacom Durban in July. He's proved he's a worthy horse to run in this type of race, big, long striding horse, what do you think? Yes, Paul, I'm not quite convinced that he sees out the 2-2, uh, I think last year's race, Pierre rode a clever one and he slowed them all down, and that's why he was running on at the finish. So I'm not quite sure he sees out the 2-2. If they go a bit, he's not going to get there. But uh, he's a good, solid galloper. Right, Kev? Yeah, no, good, solid galloper. It looks very well. Um, got beat a length last year. Went down a short head to Mananoresco in the drill all stakes. His preparation looks like it's right. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, place bet on this horse, 
he could be a good value. He's 30 to 1 at the moment on the books. I'm sure he might go a little bit bigger, but for a place bet, he could be a, he could be a good one. Goss? Yeah, I don't think he's made enough improvement for me from last year to this year. I think he's, uh, he deserves his place, but uh, does he get the distance? I'm not sure. Okay, interesting. Now, uh, when one considers how many horses want to gallop, the next horse, Crambambuli, has really won well. He stays very well, this horse. And if it's really hot, like Garth says it could be, then this horse certainly comes into picture. Watching him in the gallop, what do you think, Andrew? Um, he wasn't asked to do very much in the gallop. He was, it was just a, a, a gentle half pace all the way around. Um, he's drawn 19, but he does stay. So I think he might be going hard in the beginning. Yeah, good point. Laf, a lot of talk about this horse, uh, anti-post, Cram Um As I said, my son's in the game and, and they follow the horses. As a place bet, there's a lot of money on this horse to run a place. So good enough to run a place, good enough to win for me. So his horse, I think one of the Justin Stath's live ones. Good. Yeah, I think, I mean, Justin's got five horses in the race. He's got, to, he's got to have one or two go up there to make it a true run race. He's got horses with stamina. I think this is a horse that uh, has got under the radar. I think he's got a chance. Okay, there we go. So another one that might edge up near the vanguard in the race to make sure it's a galloper's race. Right, the conglomerate won it last year. A great tactical ride by Pierce Dradham and uh, Joey Ramsden had it spot on on the day. He's trying to go about it the right way. I liked his work today. He worked on the poly with Arthur Marcus. And Andrew, he's coming along the right way. Uh, yeah, I also liked his work. I thought, I thought he worked very smoothly. Uh, he was nice and keen. And I think uh, Joey's box clever with this horse. He's got it into the race. So it's half a kilo less than last year. Um, I was a bit surprised that, that Anton didn't ride him. Um, because of the weight? Yeah, because of the weight. But I, th I think Anton was in two minds whether to ride him. I think this horse has got a big chance. Yeah, yeah, Lef, um, as you all know, this horse, he really likes, he loves Durban, he loves coming down here. Uh, he's not the best mover in town, as I say, the action horse, but today you saw him, he really was striding out well. I think Joey's got him 100%, as you say, a kilo less than last year. This horse is definitely a runner. I, I, I think he's a, he's a big horse, he, he, he can handle the, the, the big days, he can take the bumps. Um, I'd definitely give this horse a chance, he's a, the conglomerate, that's number, uh, number nine. What do you think, Garth? Yeah, I think he's had a perfect prep. I think his two runs were very good. He likes Natal. He's got less weight than last year. He came from a 20 draw. He's got a three draw. I mean, this is, uh, this is a horse that really could. We've got Callan Murray up. I think he's an uh, uh, up-and-coming kid, and he probably could pull off something like this. Be careful. Yep, Kellen had another uh, winner overseas the other day, so well done, Tim. Now, it's my turn, and everyone looks to see what Stryker Stratum, Arthur Marcus, Anthony Delpesh ride in this race, and Stryker won it last year on Conglomerate. He's gone with It's My Turn. He ran a cracking good race last year. Andrew's a very good horse on his day as well. Yeah, he's an, he's an, uh, an ex-Derby winner. Um, his form is, is hard to fault. He's there all the time. Uh, his, his work this morning was, was, was keen enough, but as Justin said to me, his, his biggest asset is, is Pierce Stratum. Um, so you've always got to take that into account. Yeah, he always wants striker on your horses. He knows exactly what to do. Comes from a deep draw, but that's not a problem with striker. He'll be able to control the, the race by the pace. If, he, if they're going too quick, he will, he will drop in behind. If they're going slow, he'll be up there. He's a very good horse. This, on his day, he's good enough to win a race like this. You know, if you think the conglomerate run from a 20 draw with the same rider on, this horse is drawn out wide, he's got, he's got Pierre Stratum up, a master of pace, um, he's got all the stamina in the world, he'll be there, he'll be up, he'll be making the pace, and uh, he's one of those horses. I think the, the Snaith horses have had a wonderful prep. Yep, certainly he has, and uh, that's it's my turn for Fred Crabier. Now we move on to Duncan Howells' second run of the beautifully named Ten Gun Salute with uh, Kaspin Dula and Flongwe riding him in the gallop today. And he, he let him do a good piece of work. What did you think, Andrew? Um, Paul, I wasn't all that impressed with the work, but uh, Duncan, Duncan was very happy. So I mean, I've been watching this work. I, mean, I go to Ashburton just about every morning and I've been watching him in build up. And Duncan's got him absolutely spot on now. I know he had a bit of a pinched nerve in his neck. The physio has been working on him, and the way he won the, the 1900, I mean, he came from nearly last, and Muzi said he just took off with him. So, for me, that was a good run. Yeah, the left, I can't agree with uh, Andrew any more than that. The horse came from a long way back, went really wide around the turn, quickened past him, and won a good race. On that run, he, on that, uh, run, he deserves to be in the race. 
Duncan, as you say, has got him 100% right speaking to Duncan, said he'll have a little bit of work today and that'll be the end of him. Put him in cotton wool and bring him to the races in nine days' time. So I definitely think this is a horse. You've got to uh, add him into your top six. Yeah, I think a very good last run uh, when he won. I, th I, th I thought he won a great race. I think I think he's also with loads of ability, but he, I think he's got issues. He's, he's got to bring, the right horse has got to come to races on the day. Um, if it does, he's, he's, he'll be there. Got to stay with that horse for a moment. He, he won an, uh, on a soft track. Is, is, uh, that's not going to happen this year at this stage. So it would en enhance his chances a bit of rain. Left the long term report is uh, drizzly rainy on July day. So be careful. So keep an eye on this horse. Okay, Garth, uh, the soothsayer, has uh, said we could get a bit of a sprinkling. Okay, let's move on to a horse who's rather fortuitous, and that's Black Arthur, who I thought was given a bit of work to do as well, Andrew. Uh, he was, yeah, and he was keen in his work. Um, and I know there's a lot of controversy, controversy over whether he, sh he should have got in or not uh, ahead of Horizon. But I think he's a horse. He was, he was a big uh, talking horse last year. And I remember uh, Dougie White said to me that he got pushed out of the race at the last bit there and he would have run a bigger race. And he said to, the, to uh, Mr. Foster, uh, Mr. Foster that uh, he'll be a better horse this year. Okay. Yeah, Leff, I, I agree with um, uh, Andrew. I think, he's a, I think he's a huge run. I thought his work was very good today. Uh, they think a lot about the source. Um, if he's genuine and he brings his A game to the races, he's a huge runner. It is controversial that he did get in, but uh, these are the horses that normally come to the party. When they get in and there's a lot of talking points, uh, they, they seem to show the public up. But uh, I think this horse is a huge runner. I think Justin State will be very happy he's got him in the race. Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think it's controversial at all. I mean, I think this horse should get in before three quarters of the field. Um, last year he was the talking point. He was a cult. He's been gelded. He's had two brilliant runs back, 2.9 in the drill all, come back to run a, a third, just finding it, just uh, tiring very late. He, his third run will be spot on. He obviously didn't do a lot. He only went 1,000 meters today. I think he's had one of the better preps. I think he's the horse to beat. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't... Uh, you t take an indication from the betting. His third favorite. Why would he be lucky to get in the July? It's all about the best horses running, and he must be one of the best four. Well, we'll speak again. I don't think he should have got in, but uh, it's just a personal opinion. I thought Horizon's third and the Group 1 was better, but uh, I suppose you can have four unplaced runs and they're all bad, and you have one Group 3 third and you get in. Mind-boggling. But let's not debate that. He's in the race and he's third favourite, as you say. Now we come to Edict of Nantes. Now, Edict of Nantes is a very good horse. The second Count Dubois in the race, done very well. He, he showed his ability. Brett's got his string right on song at the moment. And uh, Andrew, uh, legitimately at the top of the boards? Uh, no, no, he's a, I mean, he's a, a, a dual derby winner. So I think he's probably one of the best handicapped horses in the race. I mean, Abashiri last year was carrying 57 and a half as a three-year-old winning the Triple Crown in, in Joburg. This is t uh, two group ones and two derbies, and he's carrying 54. So I mm. think he's, he's very well handicapped. He looks a bit of a lazy horse, got good temperament. Uh, he just sort of hacked around, and, and, and I, th I think he's a big runner. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Andrew. I think the three-year-olds this year are very well in at the, at the weights. Um, if you see, as, as you mentioned about uh, Mark Azzi's horse last year, and you go back as far as horses like Horse Chestnut, um, not running in the race because they were given 56 as a three-year-old. Um, Garth will tell you he's one of the three-year-olds. I'm one of the three-year-olds. He was down to 49. I was down to 52. That's where you want your three-year-olds to come in. Um, a lovely horse. I think Anton Marcus... He's, uh, he's picked the right horse on the race. He, he knows the horse. He's won on the horse. Uh, the horse looks very well. Uh, Brett's very bullish. Uh, Anton Marcus on anything, you're going to take a couple of uh, points less. 54 kilos, he's got to get the weight down. Garth's been in those shoes before. I've been in those shoes, and many jockeys have been in those shoes in the big races. You take the weight off because you think you're going to win a big race like this. A big runner, and he deserves to be favoured. Garth, just before we get your opinion on this, Arthur at 54 is a question mark, but you did it on Bush Telegraph. Was it 49? 49, and I was heavier than him. Don't worry, he can do it. He's got a lot of fat. <laughs> well, He'll what do did it. You, do? You, you had some famous diet, rice, brown rice and something? Brown rice and stewed apples, yeah. You don't want to go there. <laughs> uh, you, He's looked gaunt ever since, God. <laughs> you, got, you, just got to, you just got to look at it and, 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 and respect the fact that you're one of your better riders, probably one of the better riders in the world, gets off his... Uh, gets off, 
the last, well, doesn't get off. He has the choice of last year's winner, who's a, a half a kilo less, the conglomerate, to ride this uh, three-year-old. It's got to be a top three-year-old. No stamina doubts. One, two derbies. He'll be up there hoping for pace. He'll be finishing like a bomb. Um, one, of the, one of the better horses in the race and obviously the favourite. He must have won another derby in a lifetime. I wasn't around. I've got him down as a one-time derby winner and a Daily News winner, but uh, okay. we'll, we'll let you oh, mugs well, carry on. Oh, well, we're glad you yeah. saw it, yeah. That was Andrew <laughs> Why that pointed it out. Why did they give me mugs? Year in and year, they give me mugs who make these statements. <laughs> but anyway, Andrew started it. Yeah, we can blame Andrew for that, but I agree with you. This is a top horse. Mr. Winsom, just cantered today, obviously ran 2-4, won a 2-4 over the weekend. Very good horse. He, he, Kenema has an ability to get them right on the day. Yes, I know. Um, when we're parking one, you know, everybody thought, well, you know, he's got no chance. Uh, you know, Dean's got, the, he has got a knack of getting them right on the, on the, on the day. He's carrying 53 and a half, four-year-old, right weight, and he was a good winner last time out. Uh, um, he's got to be thereabouts. Kev, okay, what do you think? Yeah, Laf, I must be honest, eh, for horse that just ran in the, in the, in the derby on Sunday, um, and winning, uh, it's not easy. And then uh, a couple of days later, he has to get in a float and come down to Gravel. I thought he absolutely looked magnificent. He has taken his run well. He gets Warren Kennedy up with 53 and a half. It's absolutely a world-class rider at the moment. Um, I give this horse a chance, Lef. I, I, I think he's, he's in that winning mode at the moment. Uh, his run before that, he ran a good third, which uh, allowed them to uh, have a go at the July. Uh, they got uh, Roy and Gladys and Sean Meeker, the whole family, involved in this horse. Uh, great um, owners of the game. Um, I, I think I, this horse has got a chance, Lef. I, I, I don't leave him out of it. 53 and a half is a real a good weight to have in the July. Yeah, a good weight for a four-year-old. Wonderful patrons, the, the Meekers. Um, the run in the 1900 puts him in, puts him in with a chance. The derby win for me, I know a horse can only win, but the derby win for me, could the second horse run in the July? No way. Um, it, it's gonna, it makes it hard, but like Dean says, he's improving, he's a four-year-old, he's a Silvana. Um, I'll give him a chance. A, a first run race, he'll be running on strongly. All right, let's move on to Elusive Silver, a horse who was given a long time off after an injury, came back, had two wins since then, and uh, I thought his last win was full of merit. He's a beautiful horse. And uh, Andrew, you give him a shout? I give him a shout. He, he, you know, he came from quite well back to get up on the line to beat Crowd Pleaser um, because uh, Keegan DeMillo sort of pinched the race there. But I was a bit worried about that run in the, in the Gravel 1900. Maybe it was second run after a layoff, but he, a 10 gun salute and Mr. Winston quickened past him like he was standing still. So that's a bit of a worry for me. But um, you know, this is fourth run after a long rest, so maybe he'll come on from that. Yeah, Laf, uh, another string in, um, in the Justin Snaith bow. Uh, not the worst one to have there, but uh, as um, Andrew has said, there are horses in the race that have finished in front of him. But fourth run after a long break, uh, it's got to be 100% on the day um, uh, to, to compete in a race like this. Richard Faree, top, top class rider. Uh, you can't leave horses like this out your, your quartets and paying for six places. You never know. You could get up three or four rand a place. Could be a good value bet. I'm a big believer in the second run not being that good after a break. Uh, I think he needed that run. Uh, he came out in his third run and won. His first run he won impressively. When I spoke to Justin when he arrived in Natal, he said to me this was, this was his July horse, this was his dark horse. And uh, he was worried about the gravel straight would be short, too short for him. And in his first start he quickened up and he shot past them. And I went to him and I said to him, there's nothing wrong with the straight for that horse. It, it's, the straight is never too short, it, it's just the pace. And um, he's come back and won a good race and I think uh, it looks extremely well and definitely a big runner. Yeah, his second run back lest you forget, was in that soft 1900, and you might not have handled those conditions as well. But let's move on to Pagoda. Pagoda was runner-up in the SA Derby behind uh, El Saim, and uh, he, he looks to be a good horse. He, he, he didn't fire that well in the Daily News 2000, but he's a horse where stamina is not a problem, and I think if they really do get on with it, it would enhance his chances. Uh, I think you I need, need a strong pace, Paul. Um, Look, the way he got up this morning, he looks like a, a really lazy horse, even with the blinkers on. And I think he needs to be hard, hard at work right from the jump. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Yeah, laugh out and out stay, just looking at him, you know, bringing horse to gallop to throw the blinkers on and everything. Um, yeah, he, um, he didn't show us much today, but that's, I, I, I don't have to see 
Um, what horses do at work in the morning, if you can see, is, uh, his form His form's not bad at all, but I think he's got a bit of work to do. I don't know if this track is going to suit him 100%. I was with Jeff last time the horse ran, and he was scratching his head after the race. He just couldn't really work it out, but it was, at the, it was a night meeting, um, so you never know. But, uh, Pagoda, for me, I don't know much about the horse, but his form suggests that if, he's, if, he, if there's a good pace, he could be, uh, he could be in the finish. Yeah, he has the stamina. Um, I don't believe it was a good gallop. His stable companion was tugging him along. Uh, he had the blinkers on. He obviously needs a very strong pace or they're going to have to change tactics. Um, he'll, he'll see out the distance, but whether he's going to be sharp enough on this track, I'm not sure. Right, we're going to move on to the Gauteng gallop of uh, Safe Harbor and El Salim. And uh, both very good horses. And Kevin and I watched the gallop together, and he was very impressed with Safe Harbor, the way it picked it up. But Andrew, did you get to watch the gallop? Um, I watched the gallop. I thought they both worked quite well. But um, I know this horse was taken, uh, El Salim was taken back to Joburg because he's a... He's a bit of a difficult uh, customer, and uh, I think Sean wanted him in his sort of home surroundings to prepare him for this race. Uh, so, yeah, so if the right horse comes to the track, um, I think he's got a big chance. Yeah, Laf El Sahim, uh, a lot of talk about this horse. Uh, his preparation, he was given a break uh, in between his, uh, his runs earlier. Um, He's run second, uh, he, he's last start, not a, not a bad run. I thought Safe Harbour really, these two horses I think really worked the best out of most of the horses that worked today. They let them stride a bit. Safe Harbour on the outside really, really, really worked well. Um, both these horses, I wouldn't leave them out uh, of any of your exotic bets. Yeah, I think the, I think the, the, the gallop on the high felt was a great gallop. Um, you've got to respect Sean Terry. He's, he's kept them there. He obviously knows that he's, he, he can get the best out of them there he, and bring them down and raid. He's got a stable in Natal, and he's elected to keep them there. You've got to respect that, and I think um, both horses might be concerned in the finish. Right, there we go. We've run through them. We haven't touched on the reserve runners, but we've run through the ones that are going to take their place at this stage in the race. And uh, just before I let the panel go, I want you to give me... Well, Based on the gallops, your top four, regardless of order, Andrew. Based on the gallops? Yes, well, no, no. Just what you <laughs> saw out there and you thought, well, this worked well, or, and it has the form to back it up. Just a, a mixture of opinions. Yeah, the here. horses I thought worked well. I thought Brazuka, the conglomerate. Um, I like Black Arthur and Edict of Nantes. I thought those were the, the four. Okay, KB Shay? Yeah, Laf, I, I've been going, as we've been watching the gallops, I've been putting my numbers down. By far, either Al Sahim or Safe Harbour in Johannesburg, really top class gallops. Out of the others, Brazuka I thought really worked well today. I think he's a huge runner in the race. Uh, ten gun salute. I'm going to lean a little bit towards the Duncan Owls stable. Uh, I think he will finish in front of the other, uh, other companion. Um, Edith of Nantes, uh, you, you can't leave him out. Mr. Winston, there's, there are a couple left that, that really looked well and worked well, but uh, for me, I think Brazuka and the two, uh, Al Sahim and Safe Harbour, really stood out in the gallops. Thank you, Goth. Uh, Laf, it's harder. Edith of Nantes pulled up into a canter uh, the yes. last 200 metres, so what are you going to read out of that? But obviously he's one of the horses. The best gallop for me and the horse that I think they're all going to beat is Black Arthur. I think uh, he put up great work. Um, then again, I'll go back to last year's winner, the conglomerate. I was, very, uh, I was very pleased with the way he worked and the way he moved. And then it's my turn. And I think, um, not because I'm from Cape Town, but I think Snaith will have a big day. I think he's, he's, got, he's got five runners in the race. He could run the trifecta. Yeah, very good. Well, uh, as you can see, we were speaking to a leading bookmaker before, and he says, when the gallops are finished, that's when the interest comes and horses go out and come in. And uh, it looks very interesting. And I think the added bonus of getting Warren Lenferner to speak to the trainers, the likes of Brett Croft at after his horse was eased up, giving, him, giving us the reasons. We spoke to Snaith Kanamea and some leading riders. And I hope it's given you a better idea of what's going to happen come Vodacom Durban July Day. I'd like to thank my panelists and uh, that's all for now. Remember the magic? Heavy metal. Legislate. Power King. The conglomerate. Who will make the magic in 2017? What, what colors, colors your magic? magic.